One of the most technical and demanding circuits riders face on the calendar, the elite of Thundersport are here at Cadwell Park for round four. This is Thundersport Elite. Welcome to Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire then for this Thundersport GB round four of 2013. Four races coming up for you here today of the very highest quality and we might as well start with one of the title contenders. Grace has caught up with Phil Crow. I've managed to catch number 71, Phil Crow, the 2010 champion of the GP1 class. Uh, Phil, unfortunately, you missed out on the championship in the recent years, though. Uh, how do you think the championship's looking for this year? Yeah, yeah, I think we're in good shape this year. Um, uh, it's probably the strongest championship, strongest the championship's been for the last uh, three years. So we're just going to have to do every round and just see how it plans out. But uh, John Ingram will be back after this round. It's, it, him being away has just helped me. It's my home circuit, it's just helped me come back in the championship. Uh, had a little bit of a crash at um, Snetterton, which dropped me out of the lead of the championship before. Um, so, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, but I'm hoping we can get to the sharp end again and maybe have a win. I've had a lot of bad luck the last two years. 2010, I won the championship. 2011, I was leading the championship uh, by a good margin and I had a coming together with a downed rider at Brands Hatch and knocked myself out and it put me out for a full round which basically lost me the championship by one point at the end of the year. Um, 2012, uh, big injury to my wrist um, at the Snetterton round which put me out for three or four rounds and, and kept me off the pace for the rest of the year. Keeping these 1000cc bikes maintained is very expensive and uh, normally we run the engines into the ground and, uh, and then just hope we can find a new one for the next season. But luckily we've got Des Fleetwood on board this year, he's helping with some trick engines. We've just had a little bit of bad luck at the Northwest 200, we've blown one up there and blown one up at Snetterton, so again we're on a slow bike for this weekend. Luckily, uh, it's Cadwell, my home circuit, there's not many big straights, uh, it's a lot of corners so I can, I can ride how I want to and make everything up in the corners and, and take the race win still. So, yeah, I think there's going to be a dice for the championship, maybe maybe a four-way dice. There's, there's a lot of lads. I mean, Danny Murphy's very strong, uh, John Ingram's strong, Peter Baker will be strong when he gets his head around the new, his new bike, uh, and then various other riders as well. It's, yeah, it's going to shape up to be a good champion. There's no telling who could win it. And I understand you've got some loyal sponsors on board again for this year. Yeah, lots of people that are behind me. Uh, Object and Modernisation, BNC Express, Holt Mark from Old Beach Motorcycle, so has been with me six years now. Um, um, Des Fleetwood who's come on board for me this year with the, with the engines because he's seen what disadvantage I'm at and he, I think he must feel sorry for me so he's helping me out. <laughs> um, um, and then a string of sponsors, if I could remember them all every time I would but I'll try and keep getting them in throughout the year and every time I speak to you. Well we wish you luck for your next race and good luck in the championship. Back to you Steve. Yes, thanks uh, very much, Grace. So here we are then. Look out for Phil Crow, the 2010 champion. He does go well around uh, Cadwell Park, of course, rider that hails from market race. And there he is, number 71 on pole position. Sounding quite confident, isn't he? Second on the grid there, number 28. That's Mark Lister. Mark, uh, pretty much a local circus specialist, I think it's fair to say, around here. Jenny Tinmouth. Well, Jenny competing in this championship and the BSB uh, all season long, definitely capable of uh, a win here today at Cadwell Park. Look a bit further back and you'll find the Superstock 1000 riders, Danny Murphy, Kingsley Ruddy, Barry Teasdale, Peter Baker. Well, as Phil Crow mentioned, the defending champion, Peter Baker, number one, switched from Suzuki to Kawasaki this year. He's just finding the transition a little tough, but once he gets to grips with it, he will be definitely be a championship contender. We've got a rider with his arm up just at the back there. Not sure what's going on. I think that might be John Fisher, in fact, that's got a problem. But as we get away, Jenny Timmouth, what a rocket start she's had. That's Barry Teasdale. Great start from the reigning pre-national 600 champion, Barry Teasdale, number 224. But it's Timmouth that leads from Crow. Lister third, Baker fourth, Danny Murphy in fifth. 
bit further back there, we're seeing one or two uh, other riders. Some familiar names all the way down. Matt Late is number 100. Connor Tag is here for a race. Uh, Connor's actually out there on a 600. It was a late booking for Connor because he was at uh, Donington Park yesterday. So he's driven up overnight to be in this race. So he's down on power, but he's certainly not down in talent. Um, we've got, to, obviously, John Waghorn out there, Neil Watson, Stuart Hall, all of these riders going very well, but it's Tinmouth that leads through Hall Benz, although Phil Crow having a look up the inside, that is a great block pass down into the hairpin. Not easy to do. Uh, it's a first gear corner, but Phil Crow has the advantage as they come out of bar corner, but look at the speed of Jenny Tinmouth. She fires past Crow on the start finish straight and retakes the lead uh, ahead of Phil Crow. I've got to say that Crow's two the best corners around here have got to be the hairpin. He carries a lot more speed than some other riders. And I have to say, he is a magician uh, down at Mansfield Corner. It's this, it's one of the trickiest corners in racing in Great Britain. Very, very hard to get right. It's downhill. It's the second gear corner, maybe first for some machines. Off camber is horrible. But Phil Crow is a master down there. Oh, and not mastering over at the Exeter Park. My, that was a nasty one for Joe Carnell, number six. Just got on the power on the grass there. Kicked him up, high side. Nice to see that he's up and he's walking away. And that's the end of his race there as he just went straight on at Park Corner. And as we come out of the chicane, well, you have to wonder whether Phil Crow did actually just take the lead into Mansfield because he has got the lead now ahead of Jenny Timnath once more. Is still Mark Lister in third place. There is number 76, that's Jason Bayard. He's battling away for a few points a bit further back. He is on a GP1 machinery. For those of you that aren't aware, GP1 Championship is effectively a power bike championship. GP1 machines, like the ones you can see here, first, second, and third, Crow, Tinmouth, and Lister, are more powerful. They're tuned engines. Fourth place man there on the red Super Stock 1000 machine, number 123, Danny Murphy. That's a stock bike. Very, very standard effectively there's only a few minor tweaks that you can make to them so Danny Murphy is down on power but Danny is one of the talents of this group he is well after yesterday he is leading the Super Stock 1000 Championship the rider that won last year 600 Sportsman Elite Championship overall that race coming up in a little while there is number 88 Joe Farrer just struggling a little bit in amongst some uh, serious traffic that he's got there. Jordan Watling, Simon Critchlow, Shay Burton, James Osborne. We've got the uh, lack of adhesion flag out somewhere, so maybe it's a bit of debris on circuit, but it's Phil Crow that leads. And look at this. Well, he's got Merlin on the leathers. He's certainly a wizard of Cadwell Park as he comes into the bottom of the mountain, over the hill, into Hall Benz. And like he said, he lost a few points at Snetterton, but he's making it up here. And He's actually pinpointed John Ingram as his biggest championship threat. John is over at the TT at the moment. We send him uh, all the best. Hope he comes out of that one all OK and he gets on well. John will be back with us, hopefully, for Alton Park uh, just in a month's time. But across the line, Crow is leading. There is the pit board for Jenny Tinmouth in second place. Jenny not had a lot of luck so far this year at Thundersport GB. She's been in the hunt for plenty of wins as there's a bit of dirt kicked up there from the grass. But uh, Tinmouth is riding well here at Cadwell Park. Kingsley Ruddy, another rider that you have to take your hat off to. Really, really strong here this weekend. Number 29, Kingsley Ruddy. There's Mark Lister, local rider, number 28. I say local, he's not actually local to the circuit. It's just he knows Cadwell Park so, so well. Down the hill into Mansfield, Crow it is that leads. Tinmouth now coming under a bit of pressure. Number 20 from number 28, Mark Lister, who thought about a move down into Mansfield and then thought better of it. Fourth place there, looking dangerous, is Danny Murphy. He's on that stuck bike. Oh, and that looked like Lister's gone down in the background. 28, Lister's lost the front end down into the chicane. I think he might have clipped the curb, you know, but either way, Lister's down, he's up, he's walking away. Hands on hips, stomps away, not happy. Lister from third place, he was looking good, you know. He's looking like he was gonna challenge Jenny Timmer for second, but Mark is out of the race, so. Back to the front, no change there. Crow is away with it. In fact, Phil Crow this weekend has beaten his own lap record of Cadwell Park, and that lap time is good enough to put him well up in the mix in BSB. I've repeated it so many times that outside of British Superbikes and outside of British Supersport, the races that you see here today are probably the best that you'll see in Britain in terms of talent and speed. 
Jenny Timmuth second place then. That has promoted Danny Murphy up to third, although he's still leading the Superstock 1000 race. There is Crow, who we spoke to at the top of the show. Nice interview there by Grace. Uh, finding out a little bit more about the man that is Phil Crow. He is one of the larger riders, and he is quite happy to admit that. But if you think back uh, to the late, great uh, Dave Jeffries, who was a little heavier than his uh, counterparts, he was something else. And Phil Crow really is a talented, talented rider. And here he is, already putting a lap on one or two riders. He comes across the line to see the last lap flag. He's got a lead of around about seven or eight seconds at the moment. So I expect to see him just rolling it off on this lap. There is second place rider. Ooh, where is she? Jenny Tinmouth just gone through. Peter Baker's gone through also. And uh, we can see Barry Teasdale having some fun. Stuart Hall, nice to have him back out with us. He's a bit further back. There's Bill Callister, number 194. He's about to be lapped by Phil Crow, who will extend his championship lead by a little here with another 25 points. He won a longer race here yesterday to take 25 points. It's going to be 50. It's going to be two from two for Phil Crow. Just a few more corners left now for the local rider, and he can take full advantage of John Ingram's absence because of his duties over at the TT. Peter Baker's having a good, strong end to this race. He's made up a few places. He's into the top five overall. Kingsley Ruddy is having a smashing race. He's up into fourth place, but through Hall Benz now, there's nothing you can take away from this man at the moment. When he's on form, no one can beat him. Jenny Tunmouth about to put a lap there on Jeff Booth. She's going to take a solid 20 points here. She'll lift herself well into the top 10, I hope, with that uh, result. But it is Phil Crow, the magician, across the line. 25 points for him. It was easy. 20, number 20, and 20 points for Jenny Tinmouth. Danny Murphy, a really solid third place there, and he wins the Superstock Thousands ahead of Kingsley Ruddy. What a result for the rider on the BMW. Peter Baker takes fifth. Barry Teasdale in sixth ahead of Stuart Hall, Neil Watson, John Waghorn, and Blake Walls. And just outside the top ten there, Matt Late. So, solid performance from the master of Cadwell. Phil Crow wins on the BMW ahead of Jenny Tinmouth, and Danny Murphy takes third, but wins the Superstocks. There he is then, a very happy GP1 winner, Phil Crow, defending champion on the right there, Pete Baker and Jenny on the left. And in the super stocks, it's Danny Murphy, Kingsley Ruddy on the left and Barry Teasdale on the right. Third position in the GP1s goes to Peter Baker. It was a great race out there, but unfortunately the top, the leading guys were pulling away from you a bit there. Yeah, absolutely. Fair play to them, they're going really well. It's a lovely day and Cadwell Park's a fantastic track on a nice sunny day. Um, Unfortunately, new bike this year, and we're just not quite on the pace. Um, it's getting better each time we go out. We're just finding more and more little bits that help it. But uh, we're uh, playing catch up with setup for this year. I think um, I think we'll click with it soon. It feels nearly there, but we're just just not quite doing the lap times. So therefore, obviously, they're going to be pulling away. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Steve. Um, He's like really keen to see this bike going well and he'll do anything to get it right. Um, but it does take time. So Steve from Morello, uh, Red Cat, Tony Stannard Motors, um, Southern Mastic Roofing. There's uh, a number of others and I thank you all. Thank you, well done. Third position overall, but first in the Superstock 1000 class is Danny Murphy. You were having a great race there with Jenny Timmuth. How did you find it for you? Um, well, yesterday um, I struggled to pass Pete, so I thought I'd try and get um, a good. Well, I got a good drive out onto the back straight um, on the second lap and managed to outbreak him into there. So after that, I just wanted to try and get my head down and catch the next group. Um, when I did, um, it was difficult to stick with them. Uh, at the end, I got a bit tired, but hopefully we'll come back stronger next race. Do you think you might catch Jenny in the next race? I'll do my best. <laughs> Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Um, I'd like to like thank Mark and Alan from Long Controls and Hearst Property Management, um, Brintech Holiday Home Park, Air Van Compressors, Lisa for Day and Easy and RI Helmets, um, Dave Tully's, Dave Bostock, um, Heath Butler, um, and my dad and Graham. Well done, thank you, Danny. And second position goes to Jenny Timmuth. We've just spoken to Danny. Did you feel the pressure from him because he was right behind you the whole race? Yeah, I, I could hear him right behind me. Um, I, I was yeah waiting for him maybe to make a pass. Um, and then we got uh, caught up in a few back markers towards the end, and I, I just heard him you know not there quite so much. So I thought, oh, hopefully, and I got held up a little bit towards the end. So I was hoping he wouldn't try and 
catch you back up and make a pass. So yeah, but now it's a good race, good, enjoyable. Yeah, good fun. Excellent. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank um, Max Glass and Glazing, um, Peter Holland, um, um, product sponsors Silk Clean, Sherry Helmets, uh, Kenneth Majestic, and my mechanic Steve Bradley. I never get to thank him, so thanks to him. Well done. Thank you. And the win goes to Phil Crow, who was just out there on your own. You must like Cadwell. Yeah, Cadwell's just a good circuit for me. Uh, lots of corners, hardly any straights. Uh, I always suffer uh, wherever I go with top end speed because of my size. So anywhere with a circuit with more bends or twists in it, I always go well. Uh, with home circuit as well, so yeah, uh, it's, it's just a good circuit for me. Alton Park, another good circuit for me. Um, so yeah, just, just like it here. Good race. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, lots of sponsors uh, as always. Uh, as Fleetwood Grab Services uh, for the consistent help with bikes and engines. Um, trying to get things right at the minute. We're having a few problems. Um, then there's Object to Modernisation, um, HMT Tyres, Tim Coles Racing, um, and the list goes on and on. I just sometimes can't remember if I look at the BNC Express and uh, Renthal Arrow, all the usuals. Uh, yeah, thanks to them. Very well done. Thank you. Yeah, big well done to Phil. He'll be back with race two a little bit later on. Time to get yourself some refreshments. The Van Ventura 600 Sportsman Elite up next. Welcome back to Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire. It's round four of the Thundersport GB Championships. It's the Van Insurer 600 Sportsman Elite on pole position there. Craig Neve. Craig, uh, a rider that has uh, con contested in quite a few Thundersport races over the time, but he's been uh, in a BSB a bit here and there. So Craig, very, very fast indeed. Graham Freer there, number 18, joins us for a round. And there's his brother, Dan Freer, number 66, the leader of the championship. On the second row, you should be able to see Richie McNeil, number 22. Now, if you're watching uh, the races back at Snetterton a few weeks ago, then you'll remember the battle between Dan Freer and Richie McNeil. If you don't remember, I'll tell you, it was really, really close. So Richie McNeil got himself some decent points. He missed the first few rounds. The lights go out, and away we go. This fiercely competitive championship. Look at them all. 30 plus heading over towards Coppice Corner, up the hill, they all make it round. Nicely done, it is Daniel Freer that leads on the Yamaha, number 66. Graham Freer, his brother, in second place. That looked like Stuart Haslam. I think that was Stuart Haslam in third place. I'll have to double check that for you in a moment. Uh, Stuart Haslam is a relation to Leon Haslam. I will. Uh, double check on that but I'm pretty sure he's a cousin somewhere along the line there's Chris Halliwell the black and yellow machine just going through he's got himself up into the top 10 or 12 so a decent start there for him but it's Dan Freer that leads number 66 championship leader ahead of his brother 18 Graham Freer Stuart Haslam third Richie McNeil fourth that's Sam Cox in fifth place Sam Cox leading the super stock battle uh, just like the GP1s in this Formula 600s tune bikes super stock 600s uh, pretty much straight out of the crate. Not a great start from Lee Williams, number 94. Lee, who came into this weekend second in the championship overall, but uh, he's uh, got plenty of laps to try and put that right. Out of Barn Corner, onto the start, finish straight we go. And it is the two brothers, first and second, Dan Freer from Graham Freer, Haslam third, McNeil fourth, Sam Cox in fifth place. Steve Smith going well, number 17 on that triumph. Lee Williams is up there, Mike Horbury, Sam Thompson. Sam Thompson, who comes into this weekend, number 50, as the Superstock Championship leader. Craig Neve didn't get off to a great start, but he's making some decent progress. 17 there, just going through. That was Steve Smith. As I mentioned, oh, we've got a few riders down there. A couple of riders down on Kawasaki's, and I'm wondering if one of them is James Shaw, number four. We'll have to confirm that in a moment. Um, oh, tough to see. Didn't see any racing numbers there. Nice to see that they're both up and they're walking away. That's the main thing. But a couple of riders down. Onto the start finish straight. We've lost Stuart Haslam. Stuart Haslam has gone AWOL. So it's now Richie McNeil that leads across the line from Dan Freer, Graham Freer, and Craig Neve. So what's happened to Stuart Haslam? I understand from time screens that I've, uh, it is Stuart Haslam that's gone down on the exit of Charlie. So hopefully he's okay. That's a quick place to be coming off, I've got to say. McNeil it is that leads, just as he did back at Snetterton, but he couldn't fight off Dan Freer, who took all three wins 
Dan Freer second overall in this race, but the leader of the championship, Graham Freer, his brother. Well, let's see if he can do his brother a favor in the championship. Craig Neve, definitely the fastest rider over the weekend. He's in third there, looking pretty hungry as they fly through into the chicane, single file. No room for two there, and that's Jamie Edwards that's gone down. And that cross symbol from the marshal indicates that we're going to get red flags. We're going to get red flags. Yes, there we are. It is. This race has been stopped. A bit of concern there on the exit of Mansfield for Jamie Edwards. I do hope that he's okay. That can be nasty if you high side out of there. Uh, not sure what's happened, but uh, there we go. So, everybody crowded outside the calf there at Cadwell, ready for the restart. Completely fresh restart coming up. Forget what you've seen in the first one. It's a completely new race. And that'll be a shame for Richie McNeil because he's got himself up into first place. But a few riders will get another crack at the whip here. We send our best wishes to Jamie. Hope he's going to be well and he's fit for the next round. Stuart Haslam won't take part. Unfortunately, it sounds like he's taken a big whack to the hip. But it is Daniel Freer that leads. And we've got a rider that's gone straight on over there. Now, believe it or not, that is number four. It doesn't look much like a four, but that's James Shaw. So James, who's leading the pre-national championship with Thundersport at the moment, he's got a lot of work to do from back there. As we saw from the board at the start of this race, the number one and the number six, that was a one warm-up lap, six laps. So it's a six-lap dash, this restarted race. So you've got to try and get yourself up there straight away. Dan Freer leads from his brother, Graham Freer. Richie McNeil in third. There's then a bit of a gap back to the super stock leader, Sam Cox, who's having a wonderful weekend. There he is on the Yamaha. And, uh, well, he leads Mike Horbury, Lee Williams, Steve Smith, Sam Thompson, Andy Lawson. Andy Lawson back with us this weekend, the Scotsman, number 101. Dylan Roberts, Peter Dilks is up there as well. I can see Liam Shelcock and Joe Barton just battling away for points. But across the start, finish straight, we go again. Daniel Freer, the championship leader. He has the advantage. There is Craig Neve, just up behind Sam Cox. So Craig Neve again off to a terrible start. Got a lot of work to do from there with only, what, uh, four and a half laps remaining of this race. Around they go and down into Park Corner. Freer it is from Freer. <laughs> Daniel from Graham. Richard McNeil in third, who was leading that first uh, race before it got red flagged. Not a two-part race anymore. We got rid of that system, thank God. Uh, that was <laughs> always pretty difficult to try and work out who was leading. 66, Daniel Freer from his brother Graham. I wonder if there's been any team talks before the start of this race, of course, because Graham Freer does not feature in the championship. So if Graham was to take a few points off his brother, I'm not sure I'd want to be on the dinner table for that one. Daniel Freer leads from Graham. Richie McNeil in third, but closing in is Craig Neve. Despite that bad start, he's closing in now. Chris Halliwell just went through there. There he is, number 64, not having a great race here. Normally see Chris well up into the top 10, and he's... Uh, well, it must, something must happen to him because he's outside the top 15. Across the line to complete another lap. There is Dan Freer, but now on the charge is Richie McNeil. And McNeil, number 22, the Ulsterman, moves up into second place ahead of Graham Freer. And Graham Freer looked like he might be robbed of third also because Craig Neve was attacking. Across the line, there is Chris Halliwell trying to make up one or two places. I think that he's had a moment somewhere. James Shaw is just tucked up behind him. But back to the front, and that's number 14, Craig Neve. So Craig Neve has now got the lead, and Sam Cox isn't far behind. That's an epic performance from Sam. He's on a stock bike, remember. This is one of the circuits where power isn't everything. But I tell you what, if you get a good bit of drive from Charlie's onto the back straight, and you've got a more powerful machine, you can make up two or three tenths. So really solid ride there from Sam Cox, who's leading the super stocks ahead of... Sam Thompson and Mike Horbury at the moment. Craig Neve leads though. Well, a bad start. He's turned it around. He's got out front. He's clearing off. And it looks like it's going to be his race to lose there. Dan Freer in second. He won't mind that because he'll still extend his championship lead. He's ahead of his brother, Graham Freer. I just wonder if Richie McNeil's suffering a bit. Uh, he does suffer with arm pump. One of those riders that suffers with it, Cadwell Park, is a nightmare for arm pump sufferers. And there's Lee Williams going through, number 94. But down the hill, on the exit of Barn, across the line. Last lap flag being shown to Craig Neve. Dan Freer is in second place, but this is not over yet. Graham Freer there, almost guarding his brother in third. And Richie McNeil trying desperately to get through in fourth place. Uh, further back. Dylan Roberts is in 11th, Peter Dilks 12th, Ryan Dixon 13th, Aaron Clark 14th, Liam Shelcock taking up the final points overall in the Sportsman Elite. There's Neve, 
Looks like he's got the win. There's Dan Freer. There's Graham Freer on the blue and white machine. Number 18 on the Honda. Trying to get through. Richie McNeil in fourth has just been dropped a little bit. Down the hill towards Mansfield. Neve has got this one in the bag. Graham Freer, surely he's not going to attack his brother and take some precious championship points away from him. Oh, it's close, you know. It almost looks like he's just uh, letting him have this one. Richie McNeil can't find a way through. But Craig Neve, having set pole position, has won this race. Well, there's a few corners to go. I don't want to curse him just yet. They're not far off the lap record that was set by Lee Jackson. That's Lee Jackson Sr., not uh, Lee Bob Jackson, who was uh, an Aprilia Super Team contender a few years back and currently runs in BSB. But Neve has had a great race here, and he will win it. That's a good, solid win for Craig Neve. He exits Barn Corner, takes the chequered flag, and wins here at Cadwell Park. And Daniel Freer will extend his championship lead with second. That was close across the line for third, but it does go to Graham Freer, and Richie McNeil is off the podium. He takes fourth. An excellent fifth place overall for Sam Cox. He wins the Super Stocks. Steve Smith is across the line in sixth place after a great battle with Lee Williams and Mike Horbury is in eighth. So, Neve takes it, just under three seconds across the line ahead of the championship leader, Daniel Freer. Graham Freer third, Richie McNeil in fourth, and then Sam Cox. So there is the very tall Craig Neve on the top step of the Sportsman Elite Formula 600 podium. And Sam Cox takes the win in the Superstocks ahead of Mike Horbury and Sam Thompson. Winner of the Superstock 600 race, Sam Cox. That was a close race out there, brilliant. Yeah, I tried pushing as hard as I could and hang on to the, um, the four lads in front of me. And uh, I knew, I kind of knew I was the first stock, so I just, but I was desperate to hang on and try and get a better overall result. Uh, I was losing a lot in places, but um, we're gaining an extra, but just little, improving by little bits and we'll get there soon. But um, really, absolutely loving the bike and all the support I'm getting, getting so yeah. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Chris Moore for um, I was struggling on Saturday test day and I think he came down to help me. He wasn't meant to he wasn't going, planning to come down so and he got me out of trouble so thank you very much to him uh, and all my team and sponsors, Air Switch Gear, Power System Partners, Nitro and um, Mum and Dad, just everyone, they all do a great job. Thanks Sam, well done. And Craig Neve, winner of the Formula 600 race and winner overall, that was definitely a close race at the front. Could you feel the pressure from the other riders? Yeah, I knew there was there all the time. I knew Dan and Bud was there pushing us all the way. Um, really enjoyed it. Perfect weather for, for racing, I think. It could have been any one of you four at the front. How did you manage to pull through? What, what are your secrets? Uh, well, we knew we were struggling to get it off the line. I knew I had the pace really to run at the front, um, but I just keep composed and uh, stay relaxed. Definitely. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd just like to say a big massive thanks to Dave McKenzie at Colmac, uh, Robert Van Ply, Andy and Butcher helping us out this weekend, Glenn at the scooter shop. Two races gone, two still to go. Join us again after the break and we will bring you race two from the Bike Insurer Thundersport GP1s. Welcome back to Cadwell, Thundersport GP, the bike insurer, Thundersport GP1, race two. Phil Crow, two out of two so far, looking for the third win and extending that championship lead here. There's Mark Lister, number 28, who fell into the chicane in race one, looking to get himself on the podium. Jenny Tinmouth was second in race one. Can she add to that? Can they close down on Phil Crow? Just see there on the second row, that is Kingsley Ruddy, number 29, who had an excellent first race. The lights go on, the lights go out. It's an electric start from number 71, Phil Crow, away from the line. Good start there for Matt Lake, too. Kingsley Ruddy got himself off to a decent one, but I still think it was Jenny Tinmouth that rocketed into turn one in the lead, and it is Jenny Tinmouth. She leads into Park Corner ahead of Phil Crow. Mark Lister is in third place. It's another good start for 224, Barry Teasdale. And there's Peter Baker with the blue and white leathers on the Morello Services Kawasaki ahead of Kingsley Ruddy. Down the hill we go, and that looks like already Phil Crow is making a ch uh, challenge for first place down into Mansfield Corner. We'll find out in a moment. There's Blake Walls just goes through. The riders head out of the chicane. I expect to see Crow leading. Yes, Crow made it stick into his favorite Mansfield. He leads ahead of Jenny Tinmouth in second place. 
third there for Mark Lister. And then it's Barry Teasdale, I think, in fourth place. Yes, there's Barry. Peter Baker, fifth. Kingsley Ruddy, sixth. Danny Murphy in seventh. So we've got three stock bikes in the top six and Peter Baker's sort of sandwiched in between them at the moment. Peter Baker does run well around Cadwell Park, but uh, so once he gets used to that Kawasaki, we expect to see him flying. But at the front, Phil Crow looking for the treble here at Cadwell Park. There's Kingsley Ruddy just going through number 29, a rider from Barnsley, who's uh, not actually entered every round so far this season. We started seeing him at Donington Park, but from what we have seen, we've been very, very impressed. There's Phil Crow. He's not dropping Jenny uh, Tinmouth, is he? She is closing in on this lap. I'll just be intrigued to see what sort of lap times we're getting down to in a moment. The uh, lap record has been broken by Phil in that first race, and there's a rider down, and that looks quite a quick place to come off. Number 50, that's James Boswell on the Kawasaki. He's up, and he's walking away, hands on hips. Oh, maybe a bit winded after that one. Quick place to come off over there, park corner. Meanwhile, back at the front here with the GP1 class. Phil Crow it is that leads. Just trailing the brakes a little bit down at the bottom of the mountain, over the top. He really has got this place sus. There's 181 and 17, Neil Watson, Stuart Hall, and then just behind him, number 115, John Waghorn. He was leading the Superstock class before the start of this weekend, but he just hasn't been able to get on terms with Danny Murphy and co. a bit further ahead. Hopefully we'll see more from John when we get to Alton Park in a few weeks' time. There's Peter Baker ahead of Kingsley Ruddy, number 29 in there with the black and gray leathers and the red bike, number one, two, three, Danny Murphy, Superstock, the new Superstock Championship leader. Phil Crow then, well, he won the championship, as he mentioned at the start of the show, back in 2010, 2011, missed out by a point to Mick Robertson. Oh, and defending champion there, just getting barged out of the way by the two Superstock youngsters, Danny Murphy and Kingsley Ruddy. They've only got eyes for each other at the moment because they're fighting for Superstock glory, but they didn't care about defending champion Peter Baker then. They get themselves ahead, and let's see how that one is getting on. Murphy it is that leads the Superstock Thousands ahead of Kingsley Ruddy there, 29. Peter Baker then has just been edged back a bit, and that's Barry Teasdale still doing well. Barry Teasdale, I need to remind you, started racing last year. He was in the pre-national 600 championship. He had an orange bib on at the start of the year. He won the championship by a mile. He's jumped on a 1,000cc this year, and he's mixing it with some really talented riders. So wonderful to see Barry up there. There's Mark Lister, number 28. Man, well, I was going to say he might be a bit cautious after that first crash, but there's no caution about that move. Straight up the inside of Jenny Timnuth down into the, uh, the hairpin there. Crow comes across the line. He leads from Lister. Now, what can Lister do? He's got some clear space. Jenny Timnuth's in third. Fourth place still, Danny Murphy. And there's no one catching Phil Crow here. He is just pumping in the laps. 131, 131, 131. Just three or four tenths off his lap record every single lap. Mark Lister's, well, 32s. So it doesn't look like they're going to catch up with Phil. There's John Waghorn, number 115. John, who impressed us at Brands. He's been racking up the points, the rider from Sheerness on the JW Smart BMW Park Lane machine. But it is the number 71 back to his best form, I think it's fair to say. The whole beach tires, Moto 46 BMW rider, Phil Crow. There's Murillo Services, Kawasaki, defending champion, Pete Baker. Over the mountain. But exiting Barn Corner. Do you know what? That gap at the front doesn't look that large, does it? The last lap flag. I think, well, Phil Crow's rolling off and Mark Lister's putting the chase on here. Lister goes across the line. That lap time is a second and a half quicker than Phil. I wonder if Phil's got the pit board. I wonder if he's aware of the fact that a few more laps in this and Mark Lister might be on him. That's probably a gap that's a bit too large for a last lap uh, charge, but uh, great stuff nonetheless. There's number 29, Kingsley Ruddy. Kingsley having a good ride. Oh, and there's uh, news here that Kingsley, God, oh, that's such a shame. Kingsley Ruddy, despite getting up into fourth place overall, has been given a 10 second jump start penalty. So he'll actually fall back behind Danny Murphy and K uh, Barry Teasdale. He won't even know about that yet. But today belongs to Phil Crow. It's been a while since we've seen a treble win in the GP1 class from Phil. Probably, you'd have to look as far back as his championship winning year in 2010. Mark Lister's put up a good fight here at the end. He's up ahead of Jenny Tidmouth that's going to get another podium. But it's all been about Phil Crow. 
He exits Barn Corner and he takes it. He's done the treble here at Cadwell. Phil Crow is the series leader going into Alton Park. He's done his job. Lister, a good second place there. He's only just over a second uh, across the line behind Phil Crow. So a few more laps and who knows. Kingsley Ruddy's delighted, but doesn't realize yet that he's been given the penalty. Poor Kingsley. Uh, Peter Baker, fourth then. Danny Murphy takes fifth and inherits the Superstock 1000 win ahead of Barry Teasdale. There's Crow, center of your picture, Lister on the left and Tinmouth on the right. And in the Super Stocks, it's Danny Murphy, Barry Teasdale and Kingsley Ruddy. So let's have a look at the championship heading into Alton Park. Crow it is that has the lead. But look at that, in second place, defending champion Baker and Danny Murphy locked on 150 points. Super Stock winner, Danny Murphy. A good win for you there. How did you find the race? Is it tough out there? You look exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough weekend, hot conditions. First time on a twisty track with uh, the bigger bike. Um, I didn't get as good of a start this time, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so I had to try and make my way back through. It took a bit of a harsh move on uh, Pete Baker to try and um, break away and try and catch Jenny and that. But once I got past him, um, I just couldn't hold on. Um, arms were killing, out of breath. So. Um, Kingsley came by and then I thought well I'll stick behind him try and find out where he's weak and try and get him on the last lap but unfortunately uh, novice went down uh, in whole bends um, I don't know how either of us missed him but I ended up having to go over the grass and ended up a couple of places back um, it's a shame Kingsley Kingsley's been riding well all weekend and it's a shame he got the jump stack so it would have been nice to uh, have a battle oh, well, well done for you in any way any sponsors to thank um, I'd like to thank uh, Mark and Alan from uh, Long Controls and Hearst Property Management, um, Dave Bostock from Mac Tools, Dave Tullys, um, Fleet Graphics, um, Heath Butler, William Murphy and Sons, uh, Lisa for the Dane Easy Suit and the RI Helmet, um, and the biking show of some great pictures again. Well done Danny, thank you. Thank you. And yet again the winner overall is Phil Crow. Phil, you won that race but this race they were creeping up behind you slowly could you tell that they were there at any point yeah i was keeping an eye on my pit board i tried to try to get the break early on because i knew i'd get tired towards the end of the race with three i think we've done like 34 laps of racing around here now and it's taking its toll uh, so i thought i could get the break early on put four or five seconds into them it gave me a bit of a break at the end of the race uh, which i think worked out quite nicely uh, i had a bit of a push for the lap record early on i don't know whether i got it or not i felt like i was riding hard enough around the corners but there's just a lot of wind here today down the straights and it's really hampering the lap times. Well, your hard work has paid off with the win. Any sponsors to thank? Um, yeah, all the usual sponsors, Fleetwood uh, Grab Services for the help of the engines and uh, the loan of a bike this weekend, um, BNC Express, Object and Modernisation, um, Tim Coles, uh, Whole Beach Motorcycle Tyres, um, the list goes on. I can never remember them all, but there is a lot more. Thanks, Phil Wilden. Well, it doesn't get much better than that. Three out of three at your home circuit. Don't go anywhere. After the break, it's the final 600 race. Welcome back to Cadwell. It's the final race of the day here, the Van Insurer 600 Sportsman Elite. We saw an excellent win from this man earlier on, number 14, Craig Neve. Can he do it again? He didn't get off to a very good start, though, did he? Will he be challenged by the two brothers? There is the Honda, number 18, of Graham Freer and his brother, championship leader, just to the right of him on this 3x3 grid format at Cadwell Park. Daniel Freer, the championship leader. There he is, number 66. On the second row, keep an eye out for Richard McNeil. Keep an eye out also for James Shaw, Lee Williams, number 94. Sam Cox in the Super Stocks. Uh, Sam Thompson, of course, the championship leader, and uh, a number of others. The black and yellow, the bright bike just in the middle of your shot there is Chris Helliwell. We'll keep an eye out for him. He'll want a better result than he got in race one. And away we go then. It's again a poor start from Craig Neve on pole position. So he's not got away very well. In fact, it looks as though he's down. Ooh, seven or eight places are, and there's a problem at the start of the race for Charlie Oakland, number 19. Such a shame for her. Back to the front there, and Graham Freer up the inside of his brother. He takes the lead into Park Corner. Dan Freer second, Richie McNeil third, Sam Cox fourth, Lee Williams fifth. So where is Craig Neve? 
bit further back. We'll try and get a glimpse of them as they come around the gooseneck. Uh, Craig Neve is just behind Lee Williams, and then there's James Shaw, who uh, went sort of straight on in race one and managed to recover to finish just outside the points. There's number 85, Peter Dilks. Peter will have done a fair few laps around Cadwell before in his uh, endurance days. A bit of a wobble from the rear end there for number 22, Richie McNeil, just on the exit of the chicane. Richie will be a little bit frustrated with race one. He was leading, it got red flagged, and the best he could manage in race two was fourth place. A better start, though, for that man, number 94, Lee Williams. There's Sam Cox, there's Craig Neve, James Shaw. And there is Chris Helliwell, a much better start for number 64, the black and uh, luminous yellow machine. There is number 51 just going through, Aaron Clark on the Kawasaki also. It's a full grid of these 600s. It's Graham Freer that leads from Dan Freer. Rich McNeil there in third place. Lee Williams fourth. Craig Neve now moving ahead of Sam Cox using the advantage of the more powerful machine to go up ahead of the super stock rider Sam Cox. So will we see another late charge from Craig Neve, just as we did in race one. Dan Freer has now got ahead of his brother Graham. Richie McNeil looks like he's closing in there in third place, but in fourth, now we're seeing the best of Craig Neve. He's got past Lee Williams, and he's now trying to go past Richie McNeil down into Mansfield. There is the battle for fifth place. Lee Williams, 94, and number four, James Shaw. Lee Williams, who won a few races in pre-national 600 championship last year, and James Shaw, who's currently leading the pre-national 600 championship and doing very well in the more competitive Van Insurer 600 Sportsman Elite class. Dan Freer over the top of the mountain, ahead of his brother Graham. Bit of a gap then, back to Craig Neve. Richie McNeil now down to fourth. Lee Williams fifth. There's James Shaw in sixth place on the GNS Racing Kawasaki this year. GNS backing him after an excellent performance back at Snetterton uh, from now until the end of the season. So nice to see some of these riders getting their backing. And he certainly is a talent. Here he is, number four, across the line to complete another lap. Learning all the time. Further back, we can see there number 70. It's Glenn Harrison just outside the points. There on the Suzuki Formula 600. Back to the front, though, it is Dan Freer that still leads from his brother, Graham Freer, is doing an excellent job of just guarding his bro, making sure nobody attacks him. Craig Neve is very fast. We just saw a quick glimpse there of number 50, uh, Sam Thompson, the Superstock 600 leaders, leader overall, and number 101, Andy Lawson. Andy having a good comeback race here. Graham Freer, though, well, he was guarding his brother. He's decided to have a pop at him himself and goes up into the lead. So it's now Graham Freer that leads over the top of the mountain. It's Honda from Yamaha from Honda. Craig Neve still in third place. Maybe not making quite the same progress as he did earlier on in that six-lap dash, but he is still... Yes, he is the fastest rider of the three in terms of lap times. Across the line we come to complete another lap and just tucked in the slipstream of his brother there, using the toe. There is Graham Freer on the blue and white bike and taking the lead, the championship leader, Daniel Freer, still Neve in third. There's Chris Halliwell. He's having a really, really good race. He's up ahead there of one or two of the other super stock bikes. In fact, Chris Halliwell has got past Ryan Dixon. He's now second in the super stocks. He's up in the top 10 overall. Sam Cox still leading that super stock judge. But Halliwell, number 64, who's got an immense amount of support here this weekend at Cadwell. Um, he's got himself up into the top 10. There's Dixon and Horbury, number 31, and Sam Thompson. Horbury just going up the inside there. Thompson with the white leathers. So Thompson looking just to finish as high up as he can and guard that championship lead. But the Sportsman Elite Championship overall being led by this man. Number 66, Daniel Freer. Dan, who entered uh, BSB Superstock 600s a fair few years back and was uh, very competitive indeed. This year has decided to come and play at Thunder Sport. He's in this race. He's also out in the JHS Racing Super Twins. And uh, that's... Uh, those races you'll be able to catch in a couple of weeks' time here on Motors TV. Last lap flag out. Graham Freer in third might be out of it, but Craig Neve certainly isn't. Race one winner closing in now on Daniel Freer. Can Daniel Freer do anything about it? Will Daniel Freer want to do anything about it? Of course, Craig Neve, not really a contender in the championship. This is his only round so far in 2013. So Daniel could actually set off a second and still extend the lead overall. But 
We're talking about races here. They're going to want to win. And there is Daniel Freer, number 66. He leads from 14, Craig Neve, the race one winner. And Neve now looks like he's going to line up a move as they come through the gooseneck. They, well, they're almost side by side. Down the hill into Mansfield. Neve is now rapidly running out of corners to try and get a move made. But this is a good lap from Daniel Freer into the chicane. There's only two places left to do it. And unless Freer makes a mistake, it's not going to be down into the mountain. Good ride this from the championship leader. Richie McNeil has just fallen off the pace slightly. He's actually gone behind James Shaw. A bit of a shame for him. Um, he's obviously just maybe suffering with that arm pump. There's Lee Williams going through also. And as they exit Barn Corner, it's going to be close, you know, across the line. They're almost side by side, but it does go to Daniel Freer by 74 thousandths of a second. So. A great result there for Daniel Freer beating Craig Neve. There's James Shaw. He takes fourth. It was Graham Freer in third. James Shaw fourth. Richie McNeil fifth. Lee Williams sixth. Then Sam Cox. Chris Helliwell, an excellent eighth place. He'll take second in the Super Stocks. And then Ryan Dixon in ninth overall. He'll be third in the Super Stocks. And Andy Lawson in tenth. Good result there for Daniel Freer. He extends his championship lead. We'll take a look at the point standings in a moment. There it is, the three Formula 600s in the top three. James Shaw, sorry, Shaw wins the Super Stocks, doesn't he? That's a good effort from Shaw. There's Freer in the middle, blue and yellow leathers, championship leader. And there is James Shaw. What a result for him. Cox on the left and Helliwell on the right. So let's have a look at the points. Going into Alton, Freer it is that leads. Over 100 points is advantage now to Lee Williams in second and Sam Thompson third. Formula 600 winner, Dan Frey. You finally beat Craig Neve. He won the first race, so you must be chuffed with your win today. Yeah, I'm over the moon with that. I've uh, had a lot of seconds and thirds all weekend. Like, and, uh, I was determined in that weekend to try and win it. Like, and, uh, I rode the hardest I could, and it was, I managed to pull the win off. I'm well happy. And you like it at Cadwell? Yeah, yeah, I love it around here. It's my local track. And, uh, it's been spot on, like, uh, like I say, I've had a second and third, and uh, my brother and rode for a year, like, and he's been on it all weekend, like, so it's uh, been spot on. Any sponsors to thank? Uh, yeah, Bass Tyres, NL Components, and uh, Paul Burrell. Very well done. And winner of the Superstock 600s, yet again, James Shaw, another win for you there, you must be happy with that. I'm absolutely over the moon. I wasn't even going to go out this morning. Honestly, I really wasn't going to go out this morning. Just so happy that I went out. And how are the conditions? Are they quite exhaustive? Yeah, I'm absolutely knackered. <laughs> I've got another one, one more race today. So. Well, good luck for that one. Any sponsors to thank? Uh, no, just Mark Fish and Tom Fish from GNS Racing. My mum, my dad, my girlfriend, as usual. <laughs> well done. Thanks a lot. Well, that's it from Cadwell Park. We head to Alton Park in Cheshire next for Thundersport GB from Grace Webb and myself, Steve Day. We'll see you there.